Well, good morning, everyone. Welcome to this morning's study. And uh, we have a lot of things to review here um, and to try to understand. But before we begin, we're going to need God's spirit to guide us. So let's pray. A dear Father in heaven, thank you for the time again this morning to open your word. We invite your spirit's presence to instruct us. And we ask, Lord, that you can be with each person who is searching truth, that you can lead them in their personal study. We know, Lord, that um, we have sorted out many things in the past, but we know, Lord, that there's many things more to understand. And so we ask uh, that you can enlighten our minds. Help us in this presentation, um, in our discussion, so that we can... Uh, we can set these things on a line correctly. Thank you for hearing our prayer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay. So we've been putting uh, Daniel 11, verse 3 to 6 on a line. And there's one of the main things that we have used after we had established that this is referring to our history just as the kings of Persia are that Greece in its rise with Alexander, um, paralleling that of the fall of the Soviet Union. His fall is going to be divided to the four winds of heaven. And we had this numerical uh, riddle where we took the word broken and divided it in half and added it to the four winds, that is the Hebrew numbers. And that gave us the span of time uh, that we have been looking at in our lines, which is um, from uh, December 24th, 1979, when the, the war begins with, in Afghanistan, to December 25th, 2023. So that's 16,073 inclusive days. And, and that seems to me remarkable that we could... Uh, you know, take that riddle and apply it to a line that we had already uh, drawn out, that we had um, established on other terms. And one of them was the 8141 uh, inclusive days from September 11th that also brings us to that same date. So we're going to look again at those numbers. But the point is that when we're looking at Daniel 11, verse 3 to 6, um, we have many ways in which that we can establish that this line is our history. And what we haven't fully uh, dealt with is what the meaning of all this is, why we have this um, as our line. So um, we're going to just read over these verses again. And a mighty king shall stand up that shall rule with great dominion and do according to his will. And when he shall stand up, his kingdom shall be broken and shall be divided toward the four winds of heaven. And not to his posterity, nor according to his dominion, which he ruled. For his kingdom shall be plucked up, even for others beside those. And the king of the south shall be strong, and one of his princes. And he shall be strong above him, and have dominion, and his dominion shall be a great dominion. And in the end of years, they shall join themselves together. The king's daughter of the south shall come to the king of the north and make an agreement, but she shall not retain the power of the arm. Neither shall he stand, uh, nor his arm, but she shall be given up, and they that brought her, and he that begat her, and he that strengthened her in these times. So we know this is the story about Berenice, this, this dividing of the kingdom, uh, this agreement or covenant uh, that is made. And we were saying that this equates with the Sunday law, uh, that the players here, um, we have a woman, a church, we have the king of the south, right? And we have uh, the king of the north, right? So, so we have something that parallels Daniel 11, verse 40 to 45. 
and we know that Daniel 11, verse 40 to 45, is addressing from 1989 to the Sunday law. And so this is giving us that same history. It, does that seem clear so far? I think it's shedding some light, but I think we're going to have to really work through this more. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah. So we should be able to see the general story is Daniel 11, verse 40 to 45 here. Um, now, we've just gone up to verse 6 because when we get to verse 7, what we, you know, I guess I decided um, that this is going to, uh, and maybe it's not verse seven, maybe verse seven and eight also should be included in this. I don't know. It is possible we could even, um, uh, you know, so that what we have to figure out is where we start repeating these histories again, right? I guess that's that's part of the question. Um, now, uh, I think we, that's the basis for the question. Yeah, so when we look at, uh, some characteristics here in verse six. So we had looked in detail at verse four and we looked at the beginning of verse six. So we say that Daniel 11 verse nine is, is going to be nine 11. Um, and I also think that um, we should see that 11 nine is going to be nine 11 or November 9th when we get to Daniel nine. So, so we're not there yet. So we can, so we should see that whatever's, going to happen in Daniel chapter 11, verse 9, that it's going to be part of that repeat. The question is, where does the repeat start? Now, so in verse 6, we're saying that this is 9-11. Um, and we have this phrase, end of years. So the end of years, um, we had the years that's going to be 8,141 days. If we count from September 11th, and I'm just going to make sure that I'm correct about that. So if we count from September 11th, 2001, we come to December 25th, 2023, 8,141 days. Um, so, so that seems remarkable, especially since we can take um, that mathematical calculation. Um, and uh, let me see, we had the mathematical calculation. I'm just going to do this again because I always keep getting confused about it. So we have 7665 uh, divided by 2 plus 8009, which is the four wins. And that's going to give us 3841. Okay, so that's going to give us... Uh, um, this number, which is um, I can't see it here. Um, just gonna look here. Three eight. Oh, that's what I did wrong. I don't know what I was doing. Just made a mistake. Yeah, plus um, 8,009. I just had done the math wrong. Okay. So it's going to be 11,800 and... Okay, 3832 plus... So 11,841. And that is... Okay, so that's the number of days uh, to July 18, 2021. So if we count from February 15, 1989, we come to July 18, 2021. So it's one year past July 18, 2020. And then we have, uh, that's the other one I was thinking of. So the one is 
four winds of heaven. That adds up to 16073. And that's the number of inclusive days from December 24th, 1979 to uh, December 25th, 2023. Okay. So, so it ends up being, um, a period of, uh, is that 34 years? So 34 years, I think it is. In two days. So 44 years, pardon me. Yeah, that's what I was doing. Um, so that's 44 years and does it make sense? Oh, that's from 79, pardon me. That's what I was thinking, 89. So it's the beginning of the, so it's the whole span of time, right? So we need to, we need to draw this out. So I've been doing this, so I've been awake since 3.30, doing all kinds of math and stuff. And now my brain's a little bit tried with numbers. Um, so if we go from the beginning of this line and um, so we're going to start from the beginning here, and we're going to go to December 25th, 2023. This date here is going to change, but uh, this is basically the line itself. So this is going to be... Um, the four winds of heaven. So they're going to be scattered to the four winds of heaven. And um, so the number for four, uh, that's Arba, that's H702, winds is Ruach, that's H, what is it, seven, what's Ruach? Um, here, I should do this on this chart here. Let's, let's do this, copy this. This will be easier to look at the numbers. So the wind 7307. And, and we do have another number, which is... Um, uh, let me see here. Never mind. We'll, we'll get there when we get there. And then heaven is um, 8064. So if we take the four winds of heaven, just put it across like this. And we add them together 702 plus 7307 plus 868064 and that's going to equal 16073 days Oops, but minus. Oh. Okay. So does that seem clear? That we have this four winds of heaven, and that's going to be that they're going to be scattered. His kingdom shall be broken, it shall be divided towards the four winds of heaven. And so that four winds of heaven is going to be this uh, period of the Soviet Afghan war all the way to December 25th, 2023. A symbol of the Sunday law. It's gonna be two, two years past December 25th, 2021, where we had originally marked the Sunday law. This, law, this line's a little different. And, and we have other ways that we can mark this. 
in that we have um, this number eight, four, um, and that's the end of years. So if we take the end of years, eight, four, four, one, that's going to count us from September 11th. I'll do it this way. Two thousand one. Okay. So that's going to be eight one four one. And that's going to be years, right? As the Hebrew word is years, the end of years. <clears throat> okay. Now I want to touch on something else that I noticed when I was looking at these lines. So, Remember in the previous study, when we were addressing uh, the 1,533 days, 1,533 days, Colin had counted it from where to where? So Trump election to Biden in office. Now, the Trump election, it's going to be when Trump is de declared president. And what date is that? So, uh, November 9th, 2016. Okay. Now, if we count then, so we're, that means we're counting from a November 9th date to a January 20th date, correct? That's what we're doing. And if we're doing that, um, we can see that that January 20th date has this characteristic of its connection to November 9th, just as a symbol, right? So any November 9th, I don't know if it's any November 9th, but I think it probably is. Uh, I think maybe there's some November 9th where it's not going to be true. I'd have to see where the leap years lie in that. Um, but probably based upon the, how the, the span of time, because it's just basically in 2016 to uh, 2021. So it's going to be a period of... Um, so 16 to 20. Yeah, so it's going to be four years. So yeah, no matter how you do it, it's always going to be, if you start on November 9th and you count 1,533 days, you're going to end up on January 20th, uh, four years and a few months later, right? Okay. Now, so this means that any of these January 20th dates if we count back 1,533 days, we're going to have a November 9th date. Right? Doesn't matter where we start. And we have in this line here in this chart, we have three different January 20th dates that we have marked. Uh, one of them is uh, based on this word stand up. That is, if we count from September 11th, 5,975 days, we come to January 20th, 2018. We also can count, uh, if we take four wins as a word, um, we can count from February 15th, 1989 to uh, January 11th or January 20th, 2011, right? And, and that's going to be part of that, that puzzle where we're going to add that, uh, those extra days, right? The, 
3,300 and whatever it was, 40, 42 days or 41 days, 3,342 days, 41, depends how we do it. But anyway, that's going to also uh, add on to that 8,009 um, 8, to give us this 11841 days to July 18, 2020. So it's, it's part of this puzzle, right? And I know this starts to get confusing if you can't keep this all in your head. But the point is, um, we do have a January 20th date coming up. Now, we have one that's 26 days after December 25th, 2023. Uh, but we have another one that's going to be um, January 20th. 2025. So what is that going to be? Why is this January 20, 2025 important? This coming January 20, 2025, will be the date when the next president should be inaugurated. Right. So we don't know particularly. I mean, if, if Biden's uh, president, then, you know, I guess, he, does he go through an inauguration again if he just... No, that, that would be correct. Whoever wins the election in 2024... Yeah. would be inaugurated then on the 20th of January of 2025. Yeah, so they go through the inauguration twice, even if, if they're doing a second term. Correct. Okay. That, that I didn't know. I never paid attention before. Okay, now the interesting thing is if you count from the end of December 25th, 2023, or from noon, December 25th, 2023, let's say we would count from noon, um, it's 391 and a half days to January 20th, 2025. Okay. So um, I thought that that was interesting. So this is going to be, um, we'll just say it's 391.5. So then, and then I started thinking about it a little bit. I mean, we could say it's 391. If you if you wanted to, we could just do it like this. We can just go exclusive. That means you're not counting January 20th and you're not counting December 25th, 2023. There's 391 days in between them. So would that be significant in this line? Or is that just significant somewhere else in some other line? Because we do have other lines where we have a December 25th and a January 20th, right? That are 391 days apart. Now, we happen to have here a leap year. If we didn't have a leap year in between these two, it would just be 391 cardinal days between them. But it's just something that I noted, right? I noticed and I want to note it. But also, the other thing I was thinking about was the 1533. So 1533 days comes from August 11th, 1840 to October 22, 1844. It's a cardinal count of days. Now, if I was to take that number, and I'll just show you here. So I know it's a lot of numbers, but... So you have 1,533, and, and you subtract 273. You get the number 1,260, right? As you can see there. So you better agree with me. We better agree with you. Well, because the, <laughs> I agree with the calculator. <laughs> that, that's better. Yes. <laughs> so the calculator isn't lying to us. So we know that, and we also have that in our line. So part of that 1533 days from January 14th um, uh, 
to um, uh, March 21st, 2021, so January 14th, 2017, to March uh, 27th, 2021, has, has that division of 273 in it, right? So that was noted. Now, um, but we could also do this. I could keep s subtracting 391. Oops, what am I doing? 1533 minus uh, 391. I get 1142, and uh, that number uh, will show up on our charts if we if we look at that on our, our dates. And I keep subtracting this. I'm going to get 360. That is, 1533 is three times 391 plus 360. Is that significant? That we have that 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 you can divide fifteen thirty three in that way. That you would have those symbols occurring, yes. Okay. So that fifteen thirty three has some things hidden in it that relate to our lines that aren't evident just by looking at the number fifteen thirty three. Because if you put the number fifteen thirty three in number empire and it gives you divisors and all those types of things. It, it's not going to produce that, right? It's not going to divide a number up in that way. Um, and, um, you know, it's going to be three times seven times 73, right? So it doesn't have any characteristics that, that we can readily see by just, just analyzing it in the normal way. Um, Now, we do, of course, know that it's divisible by seven, so it's 219 weeks, which we've noted before as a symbol. Um, okay, so that's just something about 1533 that uh, we should note. Now, the other thing, then, is um, that we, since we have this connection between November 9th, if we're going to to draw these on our lines, um, you know, obviously with that December 25th, uh, let me see here. So the November 9th date we have on our lines here, I didn't put in November 9th, 2019 on this chart. I did on this chart, but this chart's a little, little busier. There's more numbers in it. And um, so this chart starts with Stephen Jameson's birthday, uh, February 11th, 1969. And you can see to September 11th, there's 11,900 days. That's 32 years, seven months. Uh, the number of days between um, uh, the Islamic calendar coming around again to a solar year. Now, to be more specific, it's actually 11,900 days and 1,190 minutes, right? So it's actually almost 11,901 days. So sometimes when you count it, it'll be, you know, you'll have that extra day in there. But in this case, it's just the 11,900 days. And, um, but it was noted that when we count from uh, that, um, and how did we do that? I'm trying to remember. If you count from November 9th, um, it's 11, 1,190 days to um, Stephen Jameson's birthday. So, so he has a connection with 9-11, and he also has a connection with 11.9. But also there's a connection with 11.9 and January 20th, right? With this 1,533 days. So this could start, starts to get a little bit obscure. I mean, again, you have to keep lots of numbers in your head and be aware of these numbers and aware of the symbols of these dates. But... Um, one of the things we have in this line is if we count 
to Stephen Jameson's 52nd birthday. Now it's it's 18,993 days, which is 18720 plus 273. So you can add 273 to 1260 to get 1533. And you can take 273 from 18993 to get 18720. So, um, so there's these connections between these dates. Now, if we're going to have a connection of this 1533, um, here you can see it's in this one uh, connecting to uh, November 9th, 2019 is going to bring us to January 20th, 2024. So you can see the 1533 days here, right? Okay. But the significant January 20th isn't the one coming up. 26 days after December 25th, 2023, but it's going to be the one that's coming up a year after that, right? That 391 exclusive days after this line is over. Now, of course, that relates back to the original line that we had with um, the princes of Persia. So the princes of Persia gave us this January 20th date. Um, and that was going to be in 2021, right? So if we counted uh, from uh, January 20th, 2021, and we count back, we get back to Trump's election, November 9th, 2016. Now, on this chart, I put November 9th, 2017. I'm not sure why I put 2017 in here. There must have been some reason. Um, so, um, because when I when I look at this here, I didn't I didn't I didn't see anything in particular why I would have done that. None of these numbers matched up to anything. So I think I was just thinking 2017 instead of 2016. I probably should change this. I could probably go through and change that. But anyway, <clears throat> when we start to put this together, we have, even though we're dealing with Greece, we can still see that this January 20th date is important. And so the 2021 date is Biden coming into power. But we have this January 20th, 2024, which would be the seventh king, right? Now, you know, we're not, we're not predicting things here because we know there is going to be a president in 2024. I mean, unless things go really south, right? So when we looked at, at the, the seven kings study, we could see the five are fallen. That would lead up to Trump. The sixth would be Biden. And, and then the seventh is going to be the seventh king, which would be what? What is the seventh king? So if we have the fifth king is the United States, the sixth king is the Democrat, um, what is the seventh king? How did we understand that? So if we go back here, we just put the seventh king as the president, the Civil War president. So, these, so this is the king where the United States uh, is going to go through a civil war. So is any of this making sense to people, what we're saying here? It's making good points. Yeah. Now, if we put he's a Civil War president, can we still say that this is under Greece as, as that America is still under the globalists in that history, but that that's going to be a war between the North and the South, between the Democrats and the Republicans under the next king, the seventh king? I mean, we're sort of in a civil war now, 
you know, ever since Trump came along. But, you know, Trump is, you know, he's a Republican. Biden's a Democrat. But now we're going to have this seventh king. And this seventh king is character, characterized by the civil war. And it's still, un, but the, America is still controlled by the globalists in that history. Whether it's a Republican or a Democrat president, I don't know if that, that matters. Maybe it does. But, you know, we're, we're stepping onto the grounds of making predictions to some degree. But it's not much of a prediction to say that we're going to get a new president in 2024 or 2025. So this is going to be um, not January 20th, 2024, but January 20th, 2025. Right. So so we have an election in 24. We get the new president in 2025 on January 20th. So is, is that making much of a prediction that we get a, a civil war president in? Whoever that is. No. Okay, what did you say, Angela? I didn't quite hear it. It was all just fractured. I said not at all. Okay, we so know, it's we know there's a bloody civil war coming. And we know there's probably going to be another president under the right. globalists. Right. And, and it's probably not going to be Biden. There's not much chance that Biden's going to be elected as president again. I mean, I would say pretty much zero chance. You know, um, Americans think he's too old, right? Because he is. And even uh, the Democrats recognize that. And, and they don't think that Biden would be the one to beat Trump. So they know... Uh, they know that Biden has to go and he'll probably go, you know, just softly into the night, um, you know, with uh, obviously not receiving the nomination. I doubt he's going to be running. I don't know if they're going to. I mean, they're not going to just remove him as president, but he just won't run again. Right. That would be my guess. But, but, you know, you never know what's going to happen. Does he run when he can barely walk? Yeah, yeah, exactly. So so it's not likely that he's going to be nominated, that get the Democratic nomination. Uh, somebody else will. So, well, you know. let's, let's remember, we've already had one president that could not walk. Yes, that's true. Now, but he's had his, his wits about him. He... He very much did have his wits about him, but we've had twice in this country with Democrats that were severely disabled. Yeah. One being Woodrow Wilson, the other being Franklin Delano Roosevelt, that they both did decide to run when they should not have. Yeah. Now, in this situation, Biden is wanting to say that he wants to run again. Now, whether he's going to receive the backing to run again is going to be one question. Yeah, whether it, just seems, yeah it seems like there's hints in the media uh, because there's talk. Um, like he's a bit more uh, as an open target now in, in the mainstream media as far as... Um, running again so yeah the media the media is not in favor of him as they were just over three years ago yeah yeah so so we you know we'll see what happens but but anyway the point is even if it was biden again it would still be he would just be the seventh but i i would think likely that it's not going to be him and, and I don't know if you would count it then that way. You'd say, well, if Biden's again, is that the seventh? It's still the same. You know, obviously Obama took two spots. So, um, and Clinton as well, right? George Bush didn't. Well, George Bush did. He ran yeah. twice. 
We had two terms, and Obama had two terms, but it was Bush the first that didn't. Correct. One term. Okay. Um, so anyway, uh, I would think that it's not much of a stretch to say, you know, to put a date on the line and say we're going to have the seventh president of this line, but that it's still under the globalists, and so we can see how um, there is this parallel in this story. So when we go to this story here, it, it makes sense. Uh, the end of years, they just shall join themselves together. So we're going to mark the end of years as being December 25th, 2023. For the king's daughter of the south shall come to the king of the north to make agreement. She shall not retain the power of his arm, neither shall he stand nor his arm. So um, this is the king of the south, right, that his daughter is going to come to the king of the north. And so we say, well, this this history, we can put it at 9-11, so that is we're in the history of 9-11. But it's describing more clearly what we would call the Sunday law. We could say, well, we applied it to September 11th with, with the Adventist church. But overall, this covenant here is, is the Sunday law covenant. And that... So we can see that internally that's applied within the church with September 11th. But now we can see here we can apply it in this date that is connected to all of these other dates, starting a period in which we, we have a symbol of the Sunday law. So we're not saying the Sunday law is going to be a December 25th, 2023. Now, that's where this line draws us up to, this symbol of the Sunday law. But we're saying that this whole period then is just symbolized by that symbol of December 25th, 2023. Right. So we're not making a prediction for December 25th, 2023. And the only thing we're saying about uh, January 20th, 2025, is that is going to be most likely the seventh king. Right, the seventh president, this civil war president that's going to be there. And that this verse, verse six, is addressing that. And when we look at verse seven and eight, I just want to look at these. And I know this is really scattered study, but this is just how we have to go about it. We're, we're, we're searching through some straw to find a, a needle, I guess. And um, it says, but out of the branch of her roots shall one stand up in his estate. So we know it's a branch of her roots, and we have another one that stands up in his estate, which shall come with an army. Now, who is the one that stands up in his estate out of the branch of, of her roots historically? How do we understand this? Uh, the way Uriah Smith looks at it is the branch out of the same root with Berenice was her brother, Ptolemy Eurygetes. Eurygetes. He had no sooner succeeded his father, Ptolemy Philadelphus, in the kingdom of Egypt than uh, burning to avenge the death of his sister, Berenice, uh, he raised an immense army and invaded the territory of the king of the north, Seleucus Callinicus who, with his mother, Laodice, reigned in Syria. So we're going to have the king of the north and the king of the south in this battle again. Okay. Um, but hearing that a sedition was raised in Egypt requiring his return home, he plundered the kingdom of Seleucus by taking 40,000 talents of silver and precious vessels and 2,500 images of gold. Among these were the images which, which Cambyses had formerly taken from Egypt and carried into Persia. The Egyptians, being wholly given to idolatry, bestowed upon Ptolemy the title of Eurygetes, or the benefactor, as a compliment for restoring their captive gods after many years. Um, so, so if we're looking at this story, because we know that we're looking at a repeat of history, right? so this history is repeated in our time. 
How would we apply this history? Because what are the symbols here that would attach it just in the, the narrative? How would that attach it with the previous, or is this now a repeat? Or is this carried on? So we have the Sunday law in verse six. They were the king's daughter, Berenice representing a church of the king of the south, coming to the king of the north, making an agreement. This is the league with spiritualism, right? Because if we think about our history, we have the king of the north and the king of the south. The king of the south is defeated in the history of 1989. And then what we have and what we thought we had was, well, the next thing is just the Sunday law. But we know that um, Daniel 11 verse 40 has, you know, has this the, the king of the south being defeated is the response of the king of the north, right? King of the north comes against the king of the south. But as we continue to zoom into that history, we see that this history keeps repeating in that history. That is, in the Sunday law, you have this agreement between the king of the south and the king of the north. But the king of the south is um, not going to be able to stand, Right. So we had a league with America reaching its hands across the Gulf to grasp the hands of the Roman power. And now it's reaching across the Bith to grasp the hand of the dragon power, right, of spiritualism. And, and we've been in that history within this movement or within, within the line that this movement has, has recognized with what has happened in the United States on January 6th, 2021, right? So with this verse seven, have to respond to out of the branch of her root shall one stand up in his estate, which shall come with an army and shall enter into the fortress of the king of the north. So is there going to be another battle again between the north and the south in our history after the Sunday law that's characterized here? Or is this just uh, repeating the history? Is this going back to the time of the end? Right, the king of the south uh, defeating the king of the north. That's the question we have to ask, or we have to answer. Any thoughts? Again, I'm just going to state it in simpler ways. Daniel 11, verse 40, has the king of the north defeated by the king of the south, and then the king of the south defeated by the king of the north. Right. And that is the pattern. And so when we look here, we're going to have in verse seven, the king of the north defeated by the king of the south. So does that bring us to um, 1798 again? Is that just rehearsing that history or is that repeating in our time? Because remember, we're going to get from verse 9, the king of the south shall come into his kingdom, shall return to his own land, but his son shall be stirred up and shall assemble a multitude great of great forces and shall certainly come and overflow and pass through. Then shall he return and be stirred up even to his fortress. And the king of the south shall be moved with choler and shall come forth to fight with him. That's going to be the battle of Raphia. So, 
So again, you're going to have these battles between the king of the north and the king of the south. Or we every time we have one where the south defeats the king of the north is that 1798. And every time when the king of the north defeats the king of the south is that 1989. Is that how we would look at it? We do have the King of the South defeat the King of the North, January 6, 2021. And we expect the King of the North to defeat the King of the South sometime in the future. Are you guys able to map, wrap your mind around this? I need some help. So let's go back here. So, so we know there's this leak. Now in verse six, is there a battle going on between the king of the north and the king of the south? Or is it just a league? So we don't hear of an explicit battle, but it says he, uh, he shall not retain the power in the arm, stuff like that. So, like, I'm asking, well, why didn't he retain it? You know, like, I'd like to know what's happening behind the scenes. Okay. Right. So one way we could look at it. So remember, we went back and when we first looked at 11 verse 6, we say, well, that's 9-11. And... Um, we, we connected it to the events of September 11th as far as uh, the Adventist church is concerned, an internal agreement. Now, is there some way in which there is an agreement at 9-11 between the king of the north and the king of the south? Could we just place that there and take verse 7 and 8 as what happened on January 6, 2021? Right? So there's different ways that we could we could piece this together. And it's it's difficult because there's a lot of pieces. And then we have to say, well, Daniel 11, 9. What is that? Is that 9, 11 or is that November 9th? And then how do we address that in connection with verse 10 and verse 11, the Battle of Raphia, right? Because we have to we have to figure this out somehow. Now, okay, so we've had Angela respond, not any other people have made any statements regarding this. But let's look at some other keys in these lines. So when we look at Daniel 11, verse 6, so it starts out with the end of years. Now, that word end of year 7093 is um, in our lines, right? So it was, uh, I'm trying to remember where we had it. Um, oops.
Okay, so where did we put 7093? I don't see it. Um, okay, so that was um, that was with Stevens' date. So it's not in that chart that we have here. It's in this other chart. Okay. So Stevens' Stevens' birthday gives us this symbol, right? That that we connect with 9/11. So remember, we can connect November 9th with um, with Stevens' birthday. Because if you count from uh, Stephen's birthday, how's it, how's it go? If we count from uh, November 9th and you count 1190 days, you come to Stephen's birthday. And, and if you count from Stephen's birth, 11,900 days, you come to 9-11, right? So 9-11 and 11-9 are connected in that way with Stephen's birthday. Okay. So that's seven through. So that's going to be the end. Uh, and then you have the word years, right? So the years Shana is going to be this um, 8141. And that's going to go from September 11th, 2001 to December 25th, 2023. So that's an inclusive count. You see it here as 8140. We're counting it inclusively in this case. Okay. Now, we, so we have another number that we have to consider, and that's the last word in Daniel 11, verse 6. And that's going to be, and he that strengthened her in these times. Now, what do we notice about this number, 6256? It's not going to be readily evident looking at it. So this word times, uh, just the meaning of the word means time, especially now when right so so time in this sort of these times right in in, in the now so six two five six if we divide it by three ninety one we have sixteen so 16 is 8 plus 8. Is that significant that this number is divisible by 391? Well, it should be. Okay. Um, so it should be. So there's um, – so it's it's divisible by – uh, 391, 16 times, and that should be considered significant. So 6256. Now, as a span of time, how long is it? 6256, if we divide it by 365 and a quarter, it's going to give us a period, oops, six, two, five, six. It's going to give us a period of 17 years. But also take a look at what Iran just posted in the chat. And, and 47 days, okay. Okay. Okay, one plus eight plus seven times three ninety one. Okay, so sixteen is can be represented as one plus eight plus seven times three ninety one. Okay, so that's significant there, and, and we know that about the number sixteen. So it's been noted before. So, yeah, 
it's also interesting when you're when you're taking a look at this this particular word mm -hmm. that the first occurrence for this in the Bible was in what verse? Um, okay, so let me see. Six two five six. Well, it looks like um, is it Genesis eighteen ten? Well, that's what's strange because the copy of E sword that I have shows it as being Genesis eight eleven. Okay, interesting. Yours says eight eighteen eleven or eight eleven. Eight eleven. Okay, well, let me see here. Eight. Hmm. Yeah. So this this one shows it here as as well eight eleven. So why does mine not show that? Um, maybe it's just I have to look one of the other definitions, but it doesn't show it. Right. Well, that's weird. Um. I'm just going to look at this in Hebrew. Yeah. It definitely has it in 811. Okay. So that's odd why my e sword does not have it listed in its uh so this basically with this word that we're yeah. dealing with in Daniel eleven six, if we're following the rule of first mention, yeah, taking this back to Genesis eight eleven, we have the dove coming to Noah in the evening mm -hmm. with the olive branch, right? Yeah. And technically it would be the time of the evening. Correct. That would be translated if you're going to have it as time. Yeah. And it comes with the olive, olive branch. So it was coming at the time of the end of the flood with the waters receding, right? Yeah. So it was the time for Noah and his family to go forward. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so we have here, you know, so as uh, her in these times, right? So in this verse, 11.6, how are you applying then this? What do you think it means? Well, if we apply this as we are seeing from Genesis, were they not being prepared then to go back to repopulate the earth? Yeah. Good point, Aran. Um The the situation is that with this with this time being noted in Daniel eleven six, are we also not supposed to be prepared to go forth and give a message where at first we were being told to go back to our tents? Okay. But anyway, these times, right, mm -hmm. here refers to our history. Right. Right. 
and now it's plural um, because in Hebrew it's ba'et i ba'etim, so it's got uh, a bet in front, which means in, um, et, which is time, and then im ending, which is just times, right? So it has that plural form. Um, I just want to see if that plural form shows up anywhere. Where that's first mentioned. No, it's, it's, they show a different Hebrew word. No, that's not, but. So the thing that's kind of interesting about the word um, times, even though it's from the word et, but when you, uh, you put, no, so I see that's, that doesn't make sense. Okay, that's not what I want. That's just going to connect us to the seven times, which is just without the shin. If you put a shin in front of it, it would be seven times. That's all I'm saying about that. Right. So it's kind of interesting, but I don't know if that's that's really relevant. Um, so you're going to see it lots of times with the shin in front of it seven times. So the first time it occurs in this plural form, is Daniel 11, verse 6. And it's also going to show up in Daniel 11, 14. Right? So, um, so yeah. But so, it's kind of interesting that it's seven times. Okay, yeah. but the, the other comments from the chat were, were kind of interesting. Uh, first, that 16 referring to Lincoln as a type of second Civil War president. Right, the 16th president. Yeah. Right. Civil War 16 president. to note, Second Chronicles 29, eight plus eight days to cleanse the temple with the priests and Levites. Yeah, so every time we see 16, we should always think of that and 187. Okay. Right. And then and 16 has that connection. And then the other the other point that Genesis eight eleven is the reverse verse one three three nine in the book of Genesis. It has the digits of three nine one in it. Correct. Yeah. Okay. So so all those things are are, are really helpful, especially the sixteen dealing with the Civil War president. Um. But yeah, so the six two five six number is Hebrew number uh, in these times, um, and 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 when we look at the beginning of this, at the end of years, this verse starts right. So it starts with the end of years, and it ends with in these times. Or in so could we be saying in these times is the same as when is is or do we go beyond Biden? That's what I'm asking myself. Okay, yeah. So um, yes, I think this is moving past Biden. That's I think the thing that we've established is that when we look at Persia, that's in the time of Biden. He's the one that is right. But now we're in the time past Biden. We're in the seventh king. In this, when we get to the end of years, we're getting to this seventh king in that context. But we can say, like, we're moving towards that, right? So we have, we can say that this is is 9-11, but we can also put it into our history, right? So that it's moving us to this, this, this agreement is moving to what's going to happen with the seventh king, if that makes sense. So it's going to move through that history. Because first there's an agreement. That agreement has to be at 9-11. And, and, and the question I asked, which we didn't really answer, was there agreement between the United States and the UN at 9-11? Is there a league there? 
I mean, we can place it with the administration. Yeah, I think there must have been. Uh, well, I know the neocons are really involved, but the neocons are not really pro UN, as far as I know. I, I, but, but I know that these people play both sides too. Yeah, so so we know that the connections between the United States and the UN were strengthened because of 9 11. We can, we can say that. Can we safely say that? Or is that just not relevant? What, how could we how could we show this? Didn't Bush go go to the UN because he couldn't get the vote through through a Congress to declare war? Okay, well, not, I think that's what happened. Okay, so it's part of counterterrorism, right? So this has to do with the UN Security Council since nine eleven, right? that these were strengthened. Okay, so, um, you see here, because you have the UN, Counterterrorism Implementation Task Force, that's UNCTITF. Um, that's part of that. Um, So, I mean, this was happening prior to 9-11 that the United Nations was working with the United States in counterterrorism, right? But these things were, um, I guess, expedited this counterterrorism with the events of 9-11. It opened the door for Americans to allow things to happen that, that wouldn't have happened if 9-11 hadn't occurred. Could we agree with that? That's a good point. Yes, I do. Yeah. That was the yeah. war of terror instead of the war. Yeah. Okay. So, so, I mean, I think that's what we could say about 9-11 as far as I mean, obviously, it's going on before that. But things are pushed through, such as the Patriot Act, where we move away from common law to Roman law. And definitely the UN is, is then strengthened um, by 9-11 in its connection with the U.S., Um, so then when it says uh, in this, these verses here, um, so we have this agreement, but she shall not retain the power of the arm, neither shall he stand nor his arm, but she shall be given up. And they that brought her and he that beget her and he that strengthened her in these times. So who she's given up. And they that brought her, who brought her? That's the United States, right? Or is it some other power? Because the ones that begat her is the UN. So the question, who is this daughter specifically? This is some kind of a philosophy or church. It's a religious power. So we have these three here, the daughter of the South, the king, the king of the South, of course, and then the king of the North. They make an agreement 
but she shall not retain the power of the arm. Neither shall he stand nor his arm, but she shall be given up. And they that brought her, and he that begat her, and he that strengthened her in these times. So, so there's he that brought her, he that begat her, and he that strengthened her. But so why, that, yeah. why is the alternate Hebrew of that portion of the verse instead of that he that begat her, why is the alternate whom she brought forth? Okay, so um, yeah, so they, I, I they, they take the group grammar differently. Okay, Samuel, you have a thought? I think historically it was talking about Bernice's child that that she give that she gave birth to, as she was killed by Laudes, isn't it? Okay, so. So she's going to they that so it says in the alternate reading here. I'm just gonna go there quickly. Um, after uh, let me see uh, where is the alternate reading? I'm looking at whom she brought he that begat or or whom she brought forth. Right. Okay. And I think that's probably actually a better one because we're going to see out of the branch of her roots. Um, I don't know. Now, who's the her here? So this is Berenice, right? So this after many wars, Berenice. Yeah. So after many wars between Ptolemy Philadelphus, king of Egypt, and Antiochus Theus, king of Syria, they agreed to make peace on condition that the latter should put away his life, wife, Laodice, and her sons, and marry Berenice, Ptolemy's daughter. Um, so in here it says, And Antiochus recalled Laodice, who fearing another charge caused him to be poisoned, and Berenice and her son to be murdered, and set her son Callinicus on the throne. Um, he that begat her, or whom she brought forth, I think whom she brought forth might make more sense. And he that strengthened her follow father Ptolemy, who died a few years before. So, yeah, trying to figure out who each of these players are, how they relate, uh, we're going to have to think about this quite a bit. Because I'm not sure if I understand it fully. I don't, I don't have all the pieces in my head that I can fit it together. But I would think that whom she brought forth, because it says out of the branch of her roots shall one stand up in his estate. Now, of course, that's not going to be a child of hers. That's going to be her brother, right? Historically, yes. Yeah. So I'm going to have to think about this. So because, we, so, yeah, go on. Symbolically, as we're looking at this, whom she brought forth, could that be a, you know, a different, you know, a child or agreement. I mean, there's there's different ways of looking at this because of the way that this this is being presented. Yeah. Yes, I know. So that's part of the problem here. Now, if we look at this verse in in Hebrew, so right. I'm, I'm just. Hebrew on another program. Um, so, you know, all that whom she brought forth is um,
so I'm just looking at the, so it's just in the call form verb. It's a verb, an article verb. So it's got the article. Um, ha. Vehel yaloda. So this is uh, to bear, bring forth, beget, gender, travail. Um, so it's a woman who brings forth um, it's hard to see if um, does it make sense he that begat her I don't actually see that here in the Hebrew right right it's just it's just she 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 brought forth she bore and they that brought her Right. And you can see, like, there's lots of words for one Hebrew word, and all those things are attached to the word. Uh, she shall be given up. That makes sense. And they that brought her. So, um, and, yeah, so, so that's pretty simple. Oh, yeah. And so that's they that brought her. That's what that's saying. Um, whom she bore. That would make sense. And um, uh, and this would be, yeah, so it's in the hiffle form. So, yeah. So he that strengthened her, that would make sense. And then the last one, of course, is in these times. In times. <clears throat> okay. So, yeah, it makes much more sense uh, whom she brought forth. I, I mean, the whom, though, isn't even in there. The he or the whom isn't really in there. It's just they that brought her, she brought forth. So it's implied that there is... Um, going to be whom she brought forth and he that strengthened her in these times. So I, I think we have to stick with that uh, alternate reading makes sense. So whatever this, this, this power is, this daughter of the King of the South, she's going to, um, she shall be given up, right? Um, and they, now, the thing that's not clear is she shall be given up and they that brought her and they that beget her and that he that strengthened her in these times. It doesn't say what's happening to them. Is it implied that they are given up? She shall not retain the power of the arm. Neither shall he stand nor his arm. She shall be given up. And and so here, just in the English, it looks, and they that brought her, and he that begat her, and these that strengthened her in these times are, are also given up. But that doesn't really make sense. Well, again, as I'm looking at this with the alternate readings in place. Yeah. And at the end of years they shall associate themselves, which I have no issue between associate themselves or join themselves together. They basically yeah. mean the same thing. Yeah. For the daughter of the this, daughter. yeah, for yeah, the, the king's daughter of the south shall come to the king of the north and the initial translators said to make an agreement but the alternate says to make rights yeah which doesn't make any sense that doesn't make sense that translation there right because when we think of rights i mean we think of human rights and so forth but this is really a concord now, it's translated as right, right? 
Um, Because they have places where it's translated as agreement, a right, they that are equal, equity. But those are just the way translators translated in the King James. The word doesn't really mean that. It's more um, something like an agreement. So, uh, because the idea is that this is an agreement. I mean, that has to be what it is. Doesn't really make sense if they make uh, just, right, or equity. They're not trying to make equity. They're making an agreement. But anyway, go on. Well, the question that I, I keep coming back to, we know later we're going to be referring to how they become great with a small people. Now, in this situation, are these agreements, are these rights being given in such a way that abrogates the understanding that we've had in other portions of Scripture? And I have, I have to look at this in the manner of how the rights of marriage, the rights or the decisions to refer to people as they seem to think they should be referred to are being placed. I mean, we've got such confusion out there right now that we don't know from time to time how we are to refer to, to other parties. Yeah, okay. So you're saying that this would be uh, the king's daughter of the south right. comes to the king of the north um, to basically promote some kind of human rights. Correct. Yeah. I don't know if, I mean, I can see what you're saying. I don't know if that makes sense, though, based on what I see here. Because that's kind of, that's sort of really stretching the translation. But but we could we could you know leave that open. Yeah. So you would have to do it as something like grant rights. Right. Um something like that. Uh so this king of the south shall come to the daughter of the king of the south shall come to the king of the north to grant rights. That's how you want to translate it. Well, I'm just, I'm giving a rec, a, a suggestion. Yeah. Uh, because then if <clears throat> she shall be given up and they that brought her and whom she brought forth. So if all of this, all of these rights and what's, what's being pushed upon others does not stand, and those that strengthen her in that time do not stand, basically it means that something else is going to stand in that place. And we're already beginning to establish how the king of the north is going to succeed and put aside everything that that has been coming from the king of the south, everything that's been coming from paganism. What's well, possible? Um, now, how would that apply, though, in, historically? That's what we'd have to look at first. Because we have to apply it in that history. Did that occur? Right. So, so I think what we're going to have to look at tomorrow 
is going to be a little bit more of the history as to what happened here. Yeah. Ptolemy and what happened with his sisters, what, what happened in, in all of these regards. Because yeah. what we know happened is there was basically this is a league that they're making to try yeah. to unite. That's how we've understood it. So to make an agreement makes more sense in that context. Right. I don't know anything about any sort of human rights being exercised. Because remember, we have to first apply it, how it was understood historically, and then a repeat of history. Now, maybe in some ways we could say that that agreement had to do with human rights in some ways, but that wouldn't be the primary way to look at that. Okay, well, thanks for that. So uh, let's close with prayer. Dear Father in heaven, um, we ask for your care and protection throughout this day and um, that your Holy Spirit can be with us as we study and continue to look at these things and sort them out. And we just ask um, that you can bring us together again to study your word according to your will. And we pray this and ask it in Jesus' name. Amen.